I'm at the community garden, so that's why you don't see me. I thought I'd give you an update on my Parkinson's. As you guys know, everything changes every now and then. So I went um, to my neurologist a third time because she's a new neurologist, I think. And um, she had um, suggested that I try Ritery and she gave me a few samples. And I did try it for like a couple days. So I, I didn't try it for very long, so keep that in mind. But I was having um, problems with it. Just, it wasn't strong enough. And she gave me like two suggestions as far as how much to take. And neither one of them really worked. Um, what I found is that it c kind of covered like half of my symptoms compared to the regular cinnamon. So I kind of figured out on my own how much I would need to take to replace the amount of cinnamon I was using. Because right now I'm on a pretty high cinnamon amount. I take nine or 10 a day. And um, I calculated because it's, the right tree is kind of different that I would need up to like 20 pills. And they're really big capsules, they're not like little tablets like the Cinemet is. So I decided I really didn't want to take 20 pills and there is something with the price of that drug that you can get discounts. It's, it's very expensive, and I'm not sure why, but um, I would have had to get approval. She would have had to send something through to get approval because my um, insurance doesn't cover it and then the manufacturer gives some kind of discount so it does get the cost down but if you don't if you're not covered it's really expensive and basically it's cinnamon extended release so i thought she was going to have a big problem with that but actually she didn't i thought for sure she was going to tell me to try a higher dose and uh, I guess it works for some people and some people it just doesn't work for as is the case with all the Parkinson's medications. So those of you that are just diagnosed and have to go on medication, just remember that things work differently with everyone. I went back on the cinema, so I'm I have that. I still have the amandadine, but I'm gonna take one less pill because I don't think I need the pill at five o'clock. And I know that most people take two amandadines, and I was prescribed three amandadines. So if I can do it, cut it down to two, I think that would be great. Sorry about the noise. The garden's right next to the highway. And then, I'm still on the Subalter. That one, I've had a really hard time with nausea. I didn't think I could continue to be on it, but after about two or three weeks, that nausea did ease, and um, I think it does help with pain. The amandadine, you can take that for a host of different symptoms, but I specifically take it for pain that I have. I have like generalized pain, um, but it has been a lot better with the addition of the Subalta and the Amandadine. So two new symptoms that I have, and I keep saying that the symptoms come and go. I've had a lot of weird symptoms and like um, chest pains. I had like a couple months of that and then that went away. But right now, two of the things I'm dealing with is increased, increased dyskinesia. And not often, but I have been just shaken. Or I'm not sure if it's a shake or actually a fidget. It might look like a fidget. I'm just here in the community garden to do a few projects. I can only do about 10 minutes in the garden and then I get tired. But actually, if you come in on a regular basis and just do 10 minutes, it really does add up. This is my bed. I have lettuce, peas, all this is planted, but I really don't remember what I planted them with. 
luckily I'm pretty good at identifying plants and things. So I have to think back to what I was talking about. I think I was talking about the medication. Oh, I was talking about the new symptoms. Yeah, so the dyskinesia is one thing that's kind of increased. So that I have to really watch. And the other thing, I had a few incidences where I actually was seeing things. So um, I experienced hallucination, which I didn't think we got with young early onset, but I guess we do. So it's not too bad. I decided I don't want to do anything about it because I sure don't want to take another drug for that. It's kind of obvious that it's a hallucination. It's, um, I see like little insects and one day I saw like a small animal. But anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. Probably my family is not going to like me talking about this, but hey. <laughs> That's what we have to deal with with Parkinson's, so I did want to bring that up. She did ask me questions about that, and she said it's just a normal part of the progression of Parkinson's. And if I thought it was a problem, if I was scared of what I was seeing, that she could prescribe a medication for it. But as most of you know, the medication they prescribe for it is pretty strong. So I don't want to deal with that right now. It's, you know, it's, again, it's not scary and it's obvious that it's a hallucination. She did want to increase the cinemat, but she did tell me that if I increase the cinemat, that she couldn't guarantee that I wasn't going to get more of the hallucinations or, or, and more dyskinesia. So right now the dyskinesia that I have is really not too bad. I don't want it to increase. So I'm just going to stay on my current dose as long as I can. It's not that bad. I'm still experiencing off periods, but they're not too bad. I've gotten used to them. Oh, and then the last thing before I go is that I asked her about the herb that everyone, well not everyone, but that a few people are, have been trying on their own and it's, uh, I always have a hard time with how to say it, even though I'm familiar with Ayurvedic herbs. It's uh, Murens Purens. I'll put it in the description box so that you guys know about it, but it's going to take me a, a little bit of organization because I want to make sure that when I try it, that I have some su supports in place. Because um, I'm pretty sure the first day, I'll have to be careful what I do. But back to what I was saying, um, I kind of, I did want to go over with her that I wanted to try it. But I also was kind of thinking that she'd be kind of negative about it. But actually she was not. She was familiar with it. Because sometimes I've talked to other people that are in the Parkinson's field and they don't know anything about it, but she did. She is like a younger um, doctor. She looks like she's just like maybe 30. But um, I was shocked that she did say it was safe. I've never seen or heard a Western doctor say it's safe. But she said the problem, and this is something that I have heard, is that it's really hard to determine the dose that you need. She said, and again, I've heard this too, that you need the, the carbidopa for, enable, for it to cross the brain blood, um, not level, layer. It has to get into the brain. So that's not always easy. It has to cross a barrier. So she suggested if I try it that I also take some cinnamon to help with that. Now I'm going to really research this because Ayurvedically I'm a practitioner, a registered practitioner, so I know I've seen that herb used with something else and perhaps that something else is what helps it cross that barrier and would be more natural than taking the cinnamon. So I don't know if it's going to work or not but I'm going to try it and of course I will do videos. 
and she said that she would be interested interested in what happens so I'll let her know so that's for that's it for my update um, if you have just been diagnosed and are not on medication you might want to look at these videos or do some research on the internet because there are quite a few people that have had success with this um, natural it's a natural levodopa so yeah if you you haven't taken it it would be a lot better than going on the cinemat or some of the um, other Parkinson drugs that they put you on but I'll let you know if it works bye